planned to preach something else because we preach, but the Lord just laid this on my heart late last night in the middle of the night, four o'clock, woke up, little thought in uh, Mark, it's uh, out of a familiar passage, we, I feel like we preach about this lady too much, but I just, it was in my heart, so Mark 5, let's go to 5 and 25, I guess you can't preach the word too much, amen, it's a seed, it's and we receive it into our lives. We're so honored that all of our guests are here with us. Thank you for taking a, a risk, risking your reputation. It's a career risk to come to a Pentecostal church because people are going to talk about you. And uh, that's why we got parking behind the building so nobody knows it's your car. I know some of y'all took an Uber so that uh, then you got in the Uber and you're like, ooh, I know them. You're like, oh, but I... I got to get another Uber. It's they're going to find out I came to the Pentecost. All the crazy. They're going to talk about me at the family reunion. And they are. I, I can't be dishonest. They are going to talk about you at your family reunion. They're going to talk about how you all weird now. And one of these holy rollers. And at the job, they're going to make fun of you. But it's just because they've never tried it. Come on. I said it's just because they never tried it. But when you find it, I'm telling you, it don't matter what they say. Amen? Can I get a witness? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I say it often, your haters, your validator. You got to realize that your devil, people that are going to hate righteousness. Amen? The devil don't like losing. He's not, a, he's not like this cordial loser. You know? He's not like, well, we're just playing for, for fun. The devil ain't just playing for fun. Now, there's a lot of Christians just going to church for fun and living for God just for casual. But let me just tell you, the devil, it ain't just for, he's keeping, he's not the modern, you know, the modern games now where they don't keep score. The devil's keeping score. He wants every one of you. I want you to know it's the truth. So when there's a fight going on, you better know that that's a good thing. Mark 5 and 25, my friends, Brother Tony Chula, Sister Christina are here with me today, and uh, I, I tell you, their whole family, five children, and last night I, I said, uh, Tony, you're my oldest friend, and Christina said, man, that makes you sound old, so he's my longest friend, I've known Ch Tony's father was a missionary to Belgium, and my dad was missionary to the Netherlands, those are neighboring countries, and a few hours apart, so of, uh, we would see each other on occasion and spend time. And uh, as long as I've, my memory's worked, uh, Tony has been my friend. And so I'm so thankful he's here. And then he married a great uh, girl from Paris, France, named Christina. And Tony and uh, Christina, they speak uh, English and French, and I think Spanish. And so um, we're trying to teach them Vidorian while they're here. <laughs> but I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit too hoity-toity for them, you know. A high class, so uh, but we'll, we'll teach them a few words. They have five children, and they're all here too. Beautiful family, aren't we blessed to have such a great church? Amen. <laughs> Friends that can come. If you're a visitor, I'll say it. If you think we're bad on Sunday morning, just wait till we wake up. It gets crazy at night. It's going to be good. Come back 4.30. We'll have great church. Brother uh, Aaron Adams, Vidorian, will be preaching. And so it'll be wonderful. And, uh, and it'll be just, just going to be great. Brother Rich did good on Wednesday night. Thank you, Brother Rich, for preaching to us. Man, that was good. Garments in the way. You should go back and listen to it. Mark 5 and 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had. It's nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's desperation or death. I'm either going to die or I'm going to get desperate. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your spirit, your name. I thank you. Man, your presence is here. I'm thankful, God, that we have a program and plans and times to begin and conclude. But know this, you're not limited to our structure. You can move beyond it, Lord. I pray, God, that your spirit would begin right now to till the heart and the soil of a heart 
that walked into the building in need and that by your word, Lord, seed can be planted and it can be changed with the oil of the word of God that your spirit would begin to minister to us. The one thing we don't want, God, is to leave unchanged. We don't want to leave, dear God, the way we came. We came, Lord, to be changed by your word. So convict me where I need to be convicted. And I'll commit. I'm going to make a promise. Keep your eyes closed. You need to pray this prayer. God, if you prick my heart, I'm not going to leave, Father, angry. I'm going to leave changed. God, if I need your word, Lord, to encourage me, I'll allow your word to lift me up. And I will, come on, some of you need to learn how to receive encouragement. You just, you're addicted to your despair. Come on, your new addiction is depression. You need to let it go. Uh, God, if your word tells me and challenges me to rejoice tonight, and today I'm going to rejoice, I'm going to receive whatever you have for me. Uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And as one people, we say, in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're seated, put your hands together in the presence of the Lord. Not everybody did it. Put your hands together in the presence of the Lord. Let's do it together. Hallelujah. There's an attitude that will cause God to break the rules, move past dispensational times, he, with this attitude, he will stop the crowds and silence the heavens. There's an attitude that will cause him to cease the earth from spinning. He'll go out of his divine way. It's a common denominator that links people together. They differ in social status, color, sex, race. We, we read of some of them in the Bible. Their stories are known to us. Others of them sit next to you today on your pew it is this this attitude perhaps you're one of them void of fear you you have no shame anymore hope faith desperate desperate it is my my profession that leads me to many of these people it seems like today it is no different than it was in mark chapter 5 and in the ninth chapter of matthew where we find this lady who was desperate I too encounter people who have tried everything and then they show up at the preacher's office pounding on your door trembling and shaking asking for a dollar they say they want food but it's not to buy bread it's food for an addiction to get them high just one more time I've watched mothers in impoverished nations cut the limbs off their children in order to beg on the side of a road because they could not feed their family without the money that was given to them. I've had them come by and tremble and shake, tears streaming down their face, so, so desperate. My refusal oftentimes incites with them anger and I'm called horrible and perhaps you have been too. I've been threatened physically because I, I, I failed to, to further their addiction I've watched his people go from relationship to relationship, desperately searching for love, marriage to marriage, boyfriend to boyfriend, different sexes, multiple. I ask you today, why? Why? You, you have to ask, why does this CEO, it makes really no sense as none of sin does. You know it's sin when it doesn't make sense. Why does the CEO cheat just to make another dollar? Why does a thief steal, break into a home, steal for just one more drug-induced needle? Why do alcoholics hang over the toilet, puking their guts out just for a couple hours of drunken pleasure? Why do prostitutes sell their bodies for a line of cocaine? Why do parents walk into teenagers' bedrooms to find them dead with a satanic skull in their hands? Why are Young people walking into high schools with weapons, blowing their classmates' heads off and, and concluding their lives in the same manner. What makes a husband of a beautiful wife get behind a computer screen and cheat on her in his mind and leave her eventually? What keeps taking you from relationship to relationship, job to job, church to church, place to place? Why did you come to church today? 
I know I'm not here for everybody, but God woke me up for somebody that came because you are, you are desperate. You're desperate. It is our text today. We, we find this familiar young lady or her age really isn't known to us. Jesus is traveling on his way to Jerry's home for Jerry says a need. It is the ministry of Jesus where he is constantly being pursued after, constantly ministering. And as he is walking towards the home where he will work a miracle, he's in a crowd of people. And on his way, this lady, and, 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 and what's interesting about her is that we know Jairus' name, and we know Zacchaeus' name, and we know Bartimaeus' name, but, but, but we don't know her name. We just call her the lady with the, with the issue. She's the lady with the issue. She's the, you know, it's that, man, I don't know her name, but yeah, it's that, it's that lady. You know, you know the one that, you know, you know that lady, what's her name? I don't know her name, but you know. You, you know that that one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that, the, yeah, she got issues. <laughs> She's got issues. And you know what I found? It's different about me at 42 than it was at 22. When I was 22, my younger years, I thought there was this point in your life, there would be this age that you came to and life was figured out. I, I hear some, some laughters and chuckles of people that, you, you, you were there as well, but you arrived at some point in your life and realized that it never happens. That there's never this magical age or stage, place. There's never this level of income, employment, status, position, title, place in the church that you get to and you're like, all right, all good. I got, nothing, I got no issues. I've discovered that everyone in every season has It's easy for us to point over her and say, oh, yeah, yeah, she got her issues. But, baby, before you point at her, you got a few more pointing back at you. You got. You say, man, he's preaching to the, he's preaching to the homeless man. He, no, I think God's preaching to somebody. No, I think God is speaking to everybody. God's word is walking through Eastgate United Pentecostal Church, traveling along your pew and uncovering the place of your hiding and saying, you've got an issue in your life. It might be your health. As you age, it might be your marriage. You've got issues if you've got kids. And then they move out and you get grandkids. Then your parents get older. You've got issues there. Mental health. Money. You either got issues because you got a lot of it. Or you got issues because you got none of it. Some of the most fearful people are the rich people. What am I going to do with all this money? Why well, do I need to invest it? It needs to be making more money. I, I get that call. I do. What should I be doing with this money? I'm like, man, this, I had to stop one recently and say, this, you got, listen, this is actually a pretty good problem you've got going on right now. You wouldn't think by the sound of their voice. They're scared to death. They've acquired it. Now they're fearful they'll lose it. This, this, but this lady, she's dealing more with more than just overdraft charges. It's a little bit bigger than the rent being due and the electricity getting turned off. She's got an issue of blood. Other than your hair, your teeth, your cornea, there's no part of your body that doesn't bleed. Prick your foot, it'll bleed. Cut your hand, it'll bleed. Slice open your leg, it'll bleed. Blood is everywhere in you. I said blood is everywhere in you. And this lady has an everywhere issue. Everything in her life is messed up. Everything about her is falling apart. For it had not only affected her blood, it had affected her relationships. According to the law of the day that she lived in, Leviticus 15 and 19, she was under this law. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood... She shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. And if a woman have an issue of blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of her issue of her uncleanliness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean of her bed, whereon she lieth all the days of her issue, shall be unto her as the bed of her separation." 
and whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as uncleanness of separation I mean seems like you could have just put it in one verse but you had to take three to make it real clear don't have anything to do with her and everything in my body's messed up everything I touch is wrong and anything that touches me is wrong come on somebody now you got into her mind and her self-esteem is gone and value is completely disintegrated and disappeared. And the Bible says in verse 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had. Now she not just got a mind problem. She's not just got relationship problems. She's just not, got, not just got physical problems. She's got money problems. I said she spent all that she had. That means she had no money. No money means no house. No money, come on, means no food. No money means anxiety. Come on now. I need all the people that say you're broke all the time. You know what it's like. You don't know what it's like to be broke. You got a cell phone. She didn't have a cell phone because she had no money, no home, no food. And, and really, it's not a matter of desire for her. It's not like this is what she wants. I mean, I can hear her tell me in my office, Pastor, I... I would love to be the perfect mother but I've got this issue that prevents me from being what I want to be I, I, I want to be the, the grandmother that I should be but because of the issue in my life I cannot be it I, I would love to get a job but I can't get a job because everything I touch becomes unclean I, I, I would love to have normal relationships but I'm bound by the issue and I, I would love to be the dad that I know I, I need to be but there's this issue where I don't get to see him but every other weekend and I, I, I got issues and I don't know what to do it's bad it's, 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 it's bad it's in her money in her mind in her body it's it's touching everything in her life. It's, it's her issue. And as bad as it is, both Mark and Matthew tell us that she had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had and nothing was better. But it got worse. Listen to me. I said it got worse. No money, no health. You've got no friends, no job, no house. And it... It got, I, I, I've just come to preach to somebody this week that said just when I thought it couldn't get any worse anybody ever been there just when I thought it couldn't get any darker just thought when I thought it couldn't get any worse it, it got worse uh, just come on are you telling me ju even that uh, e even come on it's dark how do I how do I go on in the darkness with the issues of life I remember I've, you know I, our little girl has Down syndrome Edom and she's awesome now but when she was born I told some of you the day she was born I was standing there we had no idea but I saw her the minute she came out the second I saw her face I knew and, and I was to be honest with you as a, as a parent as a, even a kid growing up that was my greatest fear was to have a mentally handicapped child some of you, you know what I'm talking about. And I don't know. I think every boy, I used to tell my friends, I'm too manly to even give birth to girls. You know what I mean? And I got girls. <laughs> I'm so manly. My offspring will be all men. <laughs> I don't think there's any 13-year-old boy dreaming about being a dad that thinks there's girls and Barbies in his house. I'll just tell you that. Amen. <laughs> And then you get them and they're the greatest thing. You realize you got to be a real man to raise girls. But of all that, even more, the last thing that I would ever have dreamed and the most scary thing that could ever happen is that you have a mentally handicapped child. And I remember the second I saw her, I knew. And I said, she, 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 she's mentally handicapped. I said, she has Down syndrome. He said, well, we don't know. We're gonna say. I said, she has Down syndrome. And then I passed out. It's <laughs> the last thing I remember. I say, I remember Brother Tommy is them saying, get him some orange juice. And I woke up upside down, you know, on this bed. They'd flipped it upside down. I feel really bad now. That's not the emotion that you're supposed to feel when you first see your newborn child. Same week, I found out my child had Down syndrome and two holes in her heart and would go in for open heart surgery. They stole the van out of the front of the house that we drove. 
In the same week, they broke into our house and stole all of our valuable possessions because you think, man, it can't get any worse. And then it gets worse. And then you say, it can't get any worse. And then it gets worse. Mary, Martha, I know he's sick, but it's got to get worse. It's going to get worse than just sickness. Oh, he'll never die. That's Jesus' friend, but it, it did. It got worse. It got worse. It got worse. Well, you know what you need to do, Pastor Tuttle? You just need to find the good in it. There's always something that's going to be getting better. And it suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better. Look at your neighbor and say, there's times nothing gets better it was this condition that she found herself in this state of almost hopelessness that she heard that Jesus would be coming to town and, and she said if I can but touch him if I can touch him the one thing she could keep in all of the darkness of her life was her faith she had lost, there's one thing you can not lose. You can lose your health. You can lose your mental, come on, strength. You can lose your money. You can lose your clothes. You can lose your house. You can lose your strength. It can go from bad to worse and not get any better. The devil can steal, come on, uh, hope, but he cannot steal your faith. The one thing that you cannot allow the devil to take from you it you can't allow life to take from you you can't allow your issue to take from you is your faith in God oh I wish I had somebody sitting on your pew saying uh, uh, I'm in the red and they're charging me $30 a day and I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent. I don't know what's going on in my marriage. I don't know what's going on in my kids. I don't know if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. But I believe God. I, 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 I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe God. Oh. Faith. Now listen, she's got faith and she's not at Eastgate on a Sunday morning. She wasn't allowed in. She's not listening to her favorite Toby Mac song or whatever your southern gospel favorite is. She's not on a padded pew getting revelation. She's not doing her praise dance, you know. She's doing her sign team. She's sick. Come on. There's somebody watching on the internet in a hospital room. She's sick and it's getting worse and nothing seems to be getting better marriage keeps getting worse kids goes from one thing with the kids to the next thing with the kids come on somebody but she had a seed of faith hmm. I just wonder if you got a seed of faith just a, just a seed of faith she had a she had just a, a seed of faith just, just a little bit of faith just, she had faith she had faith And Jesus said to them, because you unbelief, he says, but if you have faith, Matthew 17 and 20, he says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible. It is here that he compares, and it's often preached. But I'm here to somebody that don't, you don't maybe hear a lot of preaching, but you've got an issue, and what you need is a preacher. And I want to tell you that the faith that you have that pushed you into this building, Jesus said your faith, what you're believing, what you're holding on to, is, it's as a grain of mustard seed. Seed, this mustard seed, it's a, it's, a, it's a millimeter, one millimeter, smallest of all seeds, mustard seed. Now, this seed can survive. That's the cool thing about the mustard seed. It doesn't matter how cold it gets, the seed can survive. The seed, I've got a little one right up here. You can't see it because it's a millimeter. But, 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 but you, you, it, no matter if it's 10 below or if it's 110 degrees, uh, uh, this seed, this seed, it'll get blown away. This seed then will be picked 
picked up by a bird. It'll be taken up, come on, and go through the digestive tract of a bird and fall from 2,000 feet. And that would have killed anything else, but the seed survived the fall. From 2,000 feet, it fell, come on, in a pile of dung where it lays in stink. And there it lies in stink, and it comes by, and some wild animal eats it up, and it now is chewed down on by the teeth of a coyote who a digestive tract in the stomach acid of an animal but but the seed survives the acid and the intestinal tract and comes in to even more mess than it's ever been in before but no matter what it's in and no matter what it goes through and no matter how bad it stinks or how hard it falls or how dark it is the seed lives and if you can have faith that can live through the intestinal tract and through the acid and through the falling and through the darkness and through the mess then you can say to the mountain I've come to preach to somebody you've got some issues I don't know what to do i tell you what you do you get your seed of faith I said you get that seed of faith but for the seed to be productive the seed has to be you know what you do you know what you do with the seed what do you do with the seed plant it how do, how do you plant a seed you bury it you bury it you put it half an inch under the ground that's what you do with a mustard seed you bury it we talk a lot about burying you bury it you, you know how much one yard of dry soil weighs two tons <laughs> you put him under two tons of pressure come on somebody now your faith is under pressure but after you put it under two tons of dry soil what's the next thing you do brother Mark you know what do you do after you plant the seed what do you do you, 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 ever, you know that there's a weight difference in wet soil and dry soil a yard of wet soil is three tons now baby your faith is under pressure but it is only when your faith comes under pressure that your faith becomes productive you, I know your faith come on your faith has survived it's survived the acid it survived the fall it survived the mess it survived all the garbage you went through come on it survived suicides and it survived traumatic events in your family it survived come on your children going through hell and some of you have lost them and buried them in a grave but you didn't lose your faith but the hour has come for you to stop bemoaning what happened and say it's time for me to bury my faith and put it in a place where it will be planted and allow the pressure it, see the pressure's not bad I know I'll let me preach to somebody your faith's under pressure let me tell you why it's under pressure it's under pressure so that it can become productive in your life I said it's going to become productive in your yeah, come on that's the final thing for when she heard of Jesus she came in the Press. I've preached it to you before. She came in the press behind. And to, the final thing is press. I, I, I spent the night studying seeds under pressure. You realize that the more pressure you put on a seed, the faster it grows. I just, I just want to grow. I just... But then the first little bit of pressure, I'm going to leave this church. Come on, somebody. I want to be strong and mighty. You can't even get to the altar call. You can't even handle the pressure of a little convicting sermon. You're out before it even leaves. You can't grow because you're too afraid of the pressure. But if you want to grow, you need to say, I survived the issues to get me to the pressure. Everything you went through brought you to this room, put you in that pew, listening to this preacher who's putting a little pressure on your faith. Ooh, why do I keep feeling pressed? I'll tell you why you feel pressed because God is calling you to grow for your faith to grow 
He didn't give you a seed of faith that it may be blown around. He didn't give you a seed of faith to celebrate the survival. He gave you a seed of faith so that it could produce a seed and a tree and a plant. There's more in your faith than just you. There's more in you than just being an attender. There's more in you than just the issues. The more, pre- the more pressure. You want to know what forces the water out of the roots upward? It's defying gravity, by the way. You ever think about that? Water falls into the ground, soaks into a root, and then reverses gravitational force without a pump. Come on, I said, ever think about how does the water get from under the ground to 50 feet into the sky to get to the top of that tree? How does he water? I'll tell you how the water goes uh, from under the ground uh, to water the leaves in the highest tree uh, because of the pressure pushing down on the root. And the more pressure on the root, the more water goes to the sky. What are you saying? Can I get a witness of six people that say, Preacher, it's true. When my faith was under pressure, I grew like I never had before. When my faith was pushed down is when I learned how to pray. You didn't pray. Come on, when everything was hunky-dory. You begin to pray when all hell broke loose. You begin to pray when the pressure came down on your family. You begin to pray. And when you begin to pray under pressure, God began to produce and grow in you a mighty tree you ought to give God what are you saying I'm saying you ought to give God praise if there's a little pressure in your life you ought to give God praise if he's trusted you with a permanent place to grow and establish your life put the pressure on Zacchaeus you know what the pressure does to Zacchaeus makes him climb up a tree Put the pressure on blind Bartimaeus. You know what it did? It made him up the volume of his crime. What are you saying? I'm saying that pressure should never get you to the place of silence. It shouldn't get you to the place of quitting. It should get you to the place of growing. It should get you to the place of going. If I can just get up out of my house, push, whoo, push through the pressure, I can be whole. I can be whole. I ain't gonna be whole bemoaning the pressure. I'm gonna be whole pushing through it and growing in it. If I can but touch. Man, if I can touch Mike Tuttle. If I can touch my dad. It'll change my life. Whew. If I could touch him, oh man, if, if, I, could, if I could touch him, hey man, if, if I could touch him, but I, but I can't touch him, I can't touch him. We, there's a distance between us. You, you know, you know here's, here's just, a, this is gonna blow your mind. Deep revelation. You can't touch what you're not close to. In order for me to touch a person, I have to get into the person's presence. Mm. I said, in order to get in contact, I've got to get in proximity. The Bible doesn't say she crawled. The Bible says she reached. You, you gonna, I, I, I gotta at least get within an arm's length. That means I have got to get myself into the presence of Jesus. Some of you sitting on your pew. Why are they doing all this running and shouting and dancing? What is all of this? This is us. Believing his promise that he inhabits the praises. Man, dad, you look good. Man, that's a good looking tie, dad. 
Man, it'd be awesome if you'd come. Dad, would you just come here and you look really good? Hey, Dad, why don't you come here? Come here, Dad. Hey, Dad, I need you, Dad. Come, please, come. Come, please, Dad, please. Please, come. Come closer to me, Dad. Dad, please, whatever you do, just come. I've got to get to you, Daddy, please. Don't stop. Come closer. Come to me. Yeah! They made fun of me. They thought I was crazy. But I'm sick of living broken. I'm sick of living bound. I've got issues so big I don't care what any... What if you stood up on your feet and said, Jesus, come a little closer to me. That's why we're running. That's why we're dancing. That's why we're shouting. That's why there's some of us and we're rolling on the ground. You want to know what that is? That's us saying, Jesus, Jesus, you said if we praised you, you would show up. You ought to praise him like you're getting him next to you in your pew. You ought to praise him. You ought to praise him like you're coming for everything hell. When you were high on crack, when you needed a high, when you needed some money, you were broke. You didn't think twice. Let me say something here for you. It's not stealing if what they have belongs to you. And when you was high on drugs, you needed all this money, you'd break people's car doors down, shatter their windows. And Come on, somebody. You ever seen a junkie high, desperate to get high? Come on, am I right, Brother Sherman? You break into houses, am I right? Break into houses, tear down, am I right? Larry, am I right? Am I right, Stevie? Did you steal from your family? Yeah, you stole. Did you steal from, you've seen them steal? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You didn't care if it was your own mother. You would steal. Now you're sitting in church and the devil stole your joy, stole your peace, and you think you're going to get it back saying, would you please give me my joy back? That's not how you acted when you was desperate for a marijuana joint. That's not how you acted when you needed a line of coke. It's not how you acted when you needed, come on, that woman. You did all kinds of crazy things. Come on, somebody. And now all of a sudden you're looking at us like we're crazy and lost our minds because we're saying we're not, we're not here to steal. We're here to take back what was already ours. Here's what you ought to do. You ought to get as desperate for his presence as you did for a line, as you did for a, come on, what did you do? You went broke for that girl. She shattered your heart and left you broken. What'd you do for that man? You left your husband. He left you, broke your heart. What'd you do to have sex with that person that left you with a sexually transmitted disease? You gave everything. But here's the God that has all you need, peace that passes understanding joy that's beyond comprehension and you can have it you can have it come on I don't have to preach any longer there's somebody here right now here's what's going to happen the governor of the feast said most men save the worst till the end. He said, but when it got bad, when it got worse, you stepped in. He kind of steps in and works miracles when it's the worst. Maybe your life's hunky-dory and you're one of those rare exceptions to humanity that has zero issues. But for the rest of us normal people, if it's worse and it's gotten worse... He's here for you today. And, and when she touched him, the Bible says that when she touched him, that immediately, the word in Greek means per saltum. It is per saltum. And it means in literal form, Come here, Dad. She touched him, him of his garment. Per saltum. 
everything at once. Dad just went, ah, because he's a preacher. He got it. I said, she touched him. Look at your neighbor say, everything. He didn't heal her blood. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. All things are passed away. All things, everything changes. Let me tell you that the desperation that drove you to this house today, it's not just gonna change your marriage that's jacked up. It can change all of you. It'll change your money. It'll change your family. It'll change your life. It'll change your heart. Every God doesn't just wanna fix the blood problem, baby. He wants to fix your marriage problem. He wants to fix the mental health issue. He wants to make everything new. That's the kind of God you serve. He doesn't do 50% work. He doesn't work 99%. He makes it all new. On this Sunday morning, if you're in need of God to touch you, I want to invite you, please don't clog up those aisles. There's tons of space here. Come on in close. Come on, there's people trying to press through. Hey man, if you're in, if you're in some pressure on this Monday, Sunday morning, if you're going through and it seems like one thing turns into another thing and that thing is worse than the first thing. Compounded interest isn't growing your bank account. It's growing your blood mess. Yeah, con Roma Santa Yaba. Yeah. It's one kid and then it's the next. It's, it's one thing and then it's the next. It's my money, then, then my body, and then I got sick and I couldn't pay for the doctor. And then I didn't have enough money to pay for the rent. And then my son called and told me he doesn't believe in God. And my daughter called me, said she's a homosexual. And if it's not one thing, it seems like it just keeps being another. If you're in this house, come on, and you're in a place where you're so desperate that you say, I'm at the point of death. I'm not going to count to three. You don't need a magician. Magician, You don't need some magical spell to be cast over you. You need to just throw up your hands and say, Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I need you as your eyes are closed. There's going to be a hand that's laid on your head. Keep your eyes closed. That's it. There's going to be somebody begin to speak life into you. And as you begin to give him your life, you're going to lose count of ways that you should praise him. Once you've praised him in every form with every verb adjective and adverb with every noun and positive word you can praise him with I need you to let go of English and open up your mouth and let a heavenly language begin to come out of your mouth come on let that seed here grow you're going to leave this house today daddy grown I'm growing I'm growing through the pressure the pressure's pushing me into a place I've never been to a prayer room like I've never prayed Oh, it's not going to press me into bitterness. It's not going to press me into brokenness. It's going to press me into growth. I'm going to grow. Yes, you had to break a little so the seed could be revealed. But now the time has come that the seed grow. The time has come that your tree begin to reach towards the sky and go beyond your peers. Grow beyond your rokotayara bahaya. Come on, you're about to outgrow some things shokoranda yabaha hianda yada darabas hiono koyara that's it come on ministry come on ministry if you're in MIT if you're a minister of the gospel your hands are activated right now your hand your the palm of your hand is laying on a forehead yarakaya yatoro masaya shiara that's it pray somebody through the holy ghost come on pray a mother Come on, pray a mother with a broken past. You're in the right place. You're with people. Yes, we scream and shout because we're getting closer to Jesus. That's it. Don't stop. Don't stop. Let the echo of your voice ring through every corridor of hell. 
I'm not just growing, I'm growing, I'm growing bigger, I'm growing larger. Come on, there's young people growing. There's mamas and daddies growing. Come on, there's aunts and uncles, there's grandparents. You're raising your grandkids and the pressure seems to be mounting. Pressure's not gonna take you out. The pressure says bow, but Shadrach said, I, I think I'll stand in the pressure and see the angels of God work in my life. Oh. Woo. Yes. My life will never be the same. There is only one way to touch you. Just believe. As you call on his name, that's what you gotta do. Touching Jesus is all that really matters, and my life will never be the same. There is only, there's only one way. That I can touch you. I've got to believe. Yes, I do. Just believe when you call. You need to let your faith grow. We're not done praying. Come on, we're in a moment of power. Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus is all that matters. And you're not. Come on, if you've been in this longer than 20 years and you've had some pressure bared on on you and you grew. I wonder if you could find somebody, maybe a young Christian. Come on, there's members in this place. We've baptized, come on, almost a thousand people just in the last seven years. That means there's a lot of new people. If you've been in this longer, come on, the maturity of your relationship with God is how you take care of babies. Come on, I need an elder to grab a hold of the baby and say, you're gonna make it. Touching Jesus. Touching Jesus. Just believe when you call on his name. Touch it, Jesus. It's all that really matters. And your life will never be the same. There is only to touch him, to touch him, just be me when you call on his name. Oh, touch it, Jesus, it's all that really matters. And your life, you want to never be the same. Just believe when you call on. 